want you to look at somebody next to you and say, welcome to the NBC DPS. Woo! I'm all hyped up about it and everything, you know, because I love it. I love to see uh, us coming together in such a time as this. If you ever needed God, you so do need him now. So this is the kickoff night. Woo! You ought to, yeah, yeah, make some noise. Make some noise. Y'all look quiet for me tonight. I'm, I'm a little loud and, and over the top a little bit. But I am just so excited for this wonderful kickoff tonight. I'm looking forward to what God is going to do. And while we're even here, come on, can we put our hands together and thank the Lord for our bishop being with us on tonight? That's an honorable thing because a lot of times pastors don't show up for stuff like this. But he's here tonight with us. Jesus. So we are grateful for you, Bishop. And I know I've seen First Lady walking around here. If we have, she's in the back. Hey, First Lady's in the back. Hey. So glad to have our leadership here tonight with us. Amen. And of course, Staff Pastor Burns is here. Ooh, I'm excited about what's going to happen. Before we move any forward, I want to recognize all of those on this great BBS team. If you're a teacher, if you've been in the meetings, if you, some of them probably over there cleaning up and everything over there, but if you're a part of the BBS team, if you're here today, can you just wave your hand, throw your hand up there all over the place? Well, since you're throwing your hand up, how about you stand up and let us recognize who you are on this good kickoff night? Woo, put your hands together for the team. Somebody said it's teamwork that makes the. Hey, hallelujah. So we don't want to belabor the time. We also want to honor our Christian ed leader tonight while we're in the beginning. She's here, uh, Elder Lydney Gray. Thank you for kicking this whole thing off. We got a guest here tonight. And I know normally in vacation Bible schools, they split up on that first night. But we thought in the spirit of unity, we would come together as one large body tonight so that we could feed young, old, middle aged, all of us, feed on the word of God together as family, as a church family. And we don't want you to forget because going forward, we want you to invite people to come out to Vacation Bible School. Invite your neighbors, invite your friends to come out because we have a wonderful uh, time planned all of this week. But tonight we have a wonderful guest that's getting ready to come before us tonight. He is a young man of distinction. He's a prolific uh, orator. You see, I'm trying to get those right words in there. He's prolific in uh, the study of God's word. I have enjoyed him from the time that I first heard him speak. He is really not a guest of this house. This is home for him. Because he has roots here. He has seeds here. And then some of the seeds that he's already planted, we see growing up amongst our young people. I'm speaking of none other than the wonderful man of God himself, Minister Markel Nickens. I want you to stand on your feet all over this place as he prepares to grace us and present us with the lesson for tonight. Make some. My throat was a little dry. But I'm glad to be here tonight. Uh, as y'all heard, I'm Mr. Markel Nickens. This is definitely home, and I'm more than honored to be here to be able to speak to you guys. Thank you guys for even having me. Um, and I also want to give another. Honor, if y'all could clap your hands for Bishop Brady. Like Pastor LaShawn said, it's not often pastors show up to vacation Bible school. So I'm so glad to be here. Thank you so much, little one. That's fine. Thank you. Um, if you don't know, the, the subject and the, the theme for vacation Bible school this entire week is uh, the, to increase in the knowledge of God. To increase, and, and I, I want y'all to know this is a this is a going to be an interactive. I'm going to ask y'all some questions. I want you to shout, speak back to me. All right. So please don't 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 feel like this is a funeral. All right. 
but we want to increase in the knowledge of God. Amen. And tonight's focus that I really want to hone in on, and I hope I can do it justice, is growing together in God. All right. And I want to get a scripture. This is the theme scripture that uh, Lydney has prepared. Uh, Luke chapter 2, verse 52. Awesome. Luke chapter, just this one verse. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and men. Somebody say amen to the word. So I'm, I'm very excited to be able to kick off Vacation Bible School uh, this week. This is, uh, this is incredible. I'm very excited about this lesson because there's so many things that God has spoken to me that I think is good. I think is going to minister to you about growth. Yeah, I'm sorry. We, about growth. So what, what does it mean to increase? Somebody, somebody just give me something. What does it mean to increase? To grow, to add to, that's a good one. To, to, for, for there to be more, to, for growth. You know, in, in school, in education, when you, go to, uh, to, when you go to school, you go to school to learn about uh, science, mathematics, language, history, things that pertain to this world. We're increasing in the knowledge of this world when you go to school, correct? So how much more should we go to church and be increased in the knowledge of God? We're part of the kingdom of heaven. You get saved, you are in the kingdom of God. So we want to increase in the knowledge of God. So my question is, how do we increase in the knowledge of God? Give me something. How do we increase? What are some ways, just some, some ways? How do you increase when you're at home? What do, what do you do? How do you increase in prayer? Prayer, read, study. So I, I, would, I would venture to say you if you if you do that, in school, prayer is like that would be you would be called a disciple, a student. So we're disciples of Jesus. My my definition for disciple is a humble student. Not just a student that shows up, but somebody who's able to receive from the teacher. Amen. It's not it's and here's the thing about being a disciple and being a learner, being increasing in the knowledge of God, is that it's not just I get saved and I'm done. Salvation, if I could put it in school terms, that you, you've been enrolled into the kingdom of heaven. But once, once you've been registered or you've been enrolled, now it's time to do the work of uh, attending classes, vacation Bible school, going to church, and, and fellowshipping with the saints of God. So we must increase in the knowledge of God because we can't stay at the same level year after year. We got to go from level to level, from faith to faith, from glory to glory. Look at Proverbs chapter 1. We're going to increase in the knowledge of God. This is what we need to do. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7. Y'all have that ready? It simply says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and discipline. I want you to understand that this is not just head knowledge. When God talks about knowledge, he's talking about wisdom, which means not just what I know, but what I do with what I know. Do I make the right decisions with what I know? Because how many, how many know there are people in prison that know a lot? They might be intelligent they might have head knowledge but they didn't make the right choice they didn't make the right decision and so what god is really looking for as we increase in the knowledge of god is not just being able to memorize verses not being able to just pull verses off the top of our head and be able to uh just repeat stuff that we've heard he wants to know can you make the right decision in the time of adversity when you're tempted when you don't know what to do what what do you do in those situations? That's wisdom. It's the skillful ap application of knowledge. I don't react by how I feel. 
but I respond based upon the character that God is developing in me. This is how we increase in the knowledge of God. Another scripture, Psalms chapter 119, verse 11. Your word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. I love that scripture because it says, it says I, I've hidden the word in my heart, not, for, not just for it to make me feel good and make me feel accomplished by learning. I got my diploma in, in scripture, but so I don't sin against you, God. I want you to repeat after me. It is good to grow. It is good to grow. Why? Y'all know what y'all were expecting. <laughs> Why? That's this is how I study the Bible. I ask questions. Why is it good to grow? What is the point of growth? What was that, ma'am? You, ooh, you'll be handicapped. Oh, okay. That was a good one. If you don't, don't grow. Why is it good to grow? Okay, let me ask another question. What makes something good? I see the wheels turn. What was that? Recognize potential. That's good. Come here, brother. Mike, with the, with the, the tool I gave you. The, the, I gave you a power tool earlier. Now, I studied the word good. One of the definitions for the word good in the Bible is Christos. And it, it's an adjective to describe, uh, and I got this word from the scripture that says uh, evil communications, 2 second, second, uh, second Corinthians, uh, I want to say chapter 2, evil communications corrupt good men. And that word good literally means useful. So, young man, what is that I gave you? You know what that is? A drill. Now, if I ask you, take that drill and go build something. Go build something with that. Can you, can you do anything with that? Pull the trigger. It's, it's on. Pull the trigger. Is it working? So is this any good? We, I want to transform your thinking of good, just not just morality. Yes, good and bad, good and evil. But good also has a, another meaning of does it, is it useful? Does it have a function that it actually can do? That's why when you say a handicap, that's what I'm talking about. Because if you don't if you don't grow in order to get fruit, get your Bibles ready for, uh, you can just sit down, my brother. Thank you. Because I gave him a problem. I said, you use this tool. And if I give you a tool and it don't work, it's no good. Get your Bibles ready for uh, John chapter 15. I'm not going to go there quite yet. But this is the reason why I say it's good to go together in God, because our growth should produce something useful. Our growth should produce something useful. When, when God takes a seed and he plants it in the ground, as the vine dresser or as the husbandman or the, the farmer, no one plants a seed and doesn't have any expectation. Let's think about, about it in terms of money. Nobody invests money and doesn't expect a return. There's an expectation of growth and increase when I invest a seed. So God invests and he expects. And let me tell you something. The Bible said that, that Jesus increased in, in knowledge and stature and he had favor with God and man. Let me tell you something about favor. Y'all not, not gonna like me after this. Favor is for useful people. If 
This side's clapping. I gotta get the <laughs> favorites for you. Think about it. Remember Joseph. Remember the story of Joseph. And he had the gift to do what? He had the gift of, of dream, being able to have visions and interpret them. And he was not just gifted this gift so he could have glory above his brothers. God put him through trials and tribulations. You're going to go to prison. You're going to be in slavery. You're going to be accused of stuff that you didn't do. And all throughout that, he was using his gift and he was gaining favor. He already had favor with God, but even the Pharaoh could see this man is useless. Favor is not next favor is not for fun. I know it's it is it's good to have favor, but it's it's the application of what is God giving me this favor to do? How is somebody benefit how about how is somebody else benefiting from my favor? I, I preached a sermon uh it's probably a couple years ago where I was talking about how uh, how when God invests his mercy into the earth, he, best, he invests his mercy onto you. Remember the parable of the unforgiving servant when he was forgiven of all of his debt and he turned around, somebody owed him $10 next to nothing and he couldn't forgive him. And so when God invests in you, he don't expect, he, he, it can't stop with you somebody's somebody's got to start passing stuff along to the next one that's why it's important as a parent you have to pass on stuff to your children now let me let me transition a little bit we talked about the importance of growth we understand that growth is good and it's good because it's going towards fruit. Let's read real quick uh, the passage I asked y'all to get 10 minutes ago. Uh, John 15. The Bible says, I am the true vine. And my father is the vine dresser. That means the he's like a farmer. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it might bear more fruit. So you're getting cut either way. You are already clean because of the word which I've spoken to you. Next verse. Abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I'm going to stop there. That's good. I want to talk about fellowship. Okay? That might, it might seem like this is totally random, but it's going, it's going to tie. I want to talk about godly fellowship because there's another word that we use that is not a biblical word, really. And I, it is good intention. I don't, it's not really a word we have to throw away, but we do need to understand the difference between fellowship and relationship. Let's talk about it. Fellowship, and let me just boil it down so children can understand as well. I'm not going to give you a deep definition. It just means to share. It just means we share it. We're common. We're sharing amongst each other. Amongst each other. That's what we were doing when we were in the fellowship hall was fellowshipping, eating together. That's what the first church did in Acts 2 is one of the things that they did was they fellowshiped and ate together. Praised and worship, prayed in worship with God, sharing in the word. Relationship, however, is not automatically fellowship. And you know this because you don't fellowship everybody you related to. You don't fellowship with everybody you related to. You have a connection with them, 
you have a tie based upon whether it's blood or history. We, we knew each other back then, but we, we do not fellowship no more. That's the difference. So let me challenge you. Everybody says they got a relationship with God. I got a relationship with God. I'm cool. I don't need to go to church. My question is, do you have fellowship with him? It's possible to have relationship with somebody. We got a relationship. We got a connection. We cool. We on fellowship. And when I talk about fellowship, especially when it, among the saints, step fellowship is a it is sharing in biblical and spiritual activities. It's, it's hard to fellowship with somebody who don't enjoy the word. It's hard to share the word with somebody and they act like, I thought you were saved. They can't receive the word. So fellowship, is we, we have an agreement that we both delight in Christ. When we come to church, we come to fellowship, there ain't no disagreement on Christ. That's fellowship. Let me, let me close. Let me close. Biblical. So, and, and this is this is the challenge. This is don't get tight on me on this one. This is because nowadays this is this is seems is is we're getting loose on this in, in the church, in the body of Christ. Fellowship is exclusive to the saints. We have to be clear on this. Yeah, y'all, I, I, I can feel the tension. Fellowship is exclusive to the saints because we are one body, many members. I can minister to you. I can love you, show compassion, and show grace as the Bible, as Christ has commanded but fellowship is for the saints. We do I need to get a, do I need to get a scripture? Let me get a cuz I can't find it in my What is it? Uh uh 2 Corinthians and it might be 1 Corinthians too. Uh I got 2 Corinthians 6:14. I got that. What does the Bible say? Do not be equally yoked together with unbelievers. We thought that was about marriage. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness or unrighteousness? And what communion has light with darkness? If I, uh, I don't know if y'all got this. If I look at John, uh, 1 John 1 and 6, it says, if we have fellowship with him, that was quick. If we have fellowship with him and we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. Light cannot fellowship with darkness because that means we're, we're sharing. I give you the gospel, but I'm not receiving. I'm not receiving just anything. Yeah, we have to be exclusive with this. And this is this is tough for Christians because we want to we we think that that's love. We think we think that automatically means I don't love. No. Jesus had a relationship with the Father. We know this. Jesus was the only begotten Son, the firstborn of, 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 of righteousness. And he would often say, My Father. He would always he always had a, he we knew we had he had a relationship with the Father. But when we look back at that scripture, that we read in, in uh, John chapter 15. What did Jesus say? Verse uh, 4, abide in me and I in you as the branches cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. If anyone, verse 6, if anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out of a branch and is withered, and they gather them and throw them into the fire and are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it will be done for you. 
by this my father is glorified that you bear much fruit so you will be my disciples as the father loved me i also have loved you and abide abide in my love this this is what i want to point out when we abide in christ abide means to remain to stay when we abide in Christ, there is a trade that happens. This is what we have to understand when it comes to fellowship. God I told you we're sharing. We're sharing. And what God wants to share with you is oftentimes it's his David said, I will I will rejoice in your mercy and judgment. What did what did Jesus say about the fruit? that does produce, or, or the branch that does produce fruit, you still getting pruned. What's the point of pruning? To make room for more fruit. I was, I was watching some videos about uh, pruning. Let me use this illustration. I was going... This is a branch I, I pulled off my tree. This is not a great buy. <laughs> a switch, as they we used to call it. Yeah, speaking of switch, these kids, these kids have me stressing. I I know how my wife be feeling. She's at home. Uh, would you prune? Uh, pretend this is a grapevine, and some of these are supposed to be some of these are leaves, and some of these are uh, grape clusters. And I was watching a video about pruning. And when you prune, uh, the purpose of pruning, like I said, is to make room for more. The reason you have to prune is because the branches that are not producing fruit are still taking energy out of the vine. How are you taking energy, but you're not producing? I would say, if a man don't work, you don't eat. If you ain't working what you what you need to eat for, what you need energy for. And you sucking up energy when you sit up in God's house. I said it. This is what committed me to start ministering in the first place because I felt like I, I felt like God was pushing me. Pastor Brady was definitely pushing me. Because it gets to a point where growth has to produce. You have to produce, and it's challenging because sometimes we don't feel like it. Sometimes we don't. I tell, I, I tell you, this morning I did not feel like it. Didn't feel like going to work. Didn't feel like preparing the lesson. But when it's purpose, it's not about you. And God will sustain you in your obedience. So what I want to say is, when you abide in Christ, when you abide in Christ, the difference between being connected, because I watched a lot of, I, was, I looked at a lot of lessons talking about, uh, talking about this scripture, being connected to the vine. And everybody's saying, you, you need to be connected to the vine in order to produce fruit. And that's true. But we just saw in the scripture that you can be connected to the vine and not producing fruit. So what's the problem? And this is a very strong biblical principle that I need you to understand is you must not. Here, here it is. It's not just being connected to Christ. You must be receptive to him. In other words, you have to be able to receive his correction. This goes the same with parents. This goes the same with authority in the church. If you can't receive instruction, if you can't receive criticism, you're going to have a hard time growing. And you won't produce any fruit because nobody can cut you. And you're going to continue being barren, growing no fruit. This is increase. This is how we increase in the knowledge of God is can I, I'm not just going to church, I'm receiving from him, his mercies and judgment. 
judgment is not hell. It's correction. Judgment is a, it's a good word. It means I'm coming to correct you. Don't judge me. Leave you to your own destruction. It's not just about being connected. It's about being receptive. I, I receive his mercy and the judgment and I give him my faith and obedience. There's a trade as we abide in Christ. Amen? I'm about done. But this is, this is a question I want to kind of open up to y'all. And I kind of want the kids to answer. What do vine, what do vine dressers do to branches that do not produce fruit? I want a young person. What do vine dressers do if you don't speak up, I'm going to call. Start calling folk out. What do vine dressers do to branches that don't produce fruit? Jesus said, I am the vine. You are the branches. If you don't produce fruit, what happens? Aria? You get cut off. Here's another question. And it's, I think uh, the young people are going to be talking about this throughout the week. Who can tell me what the fruit of the Spirit are? All nine. Come on, Arya. Can you do it? Saint, you want to do it? Okay. I ain't going to force you to do it. Who can tell me the fruit of the Spirit? Go ahead. You can give me love. That's one. Temperance, long suffering. I heard peace. I heard meekness. Faithfulness. Joy. Not not forgiveness, technically. Self control. That's part of what are we missing? Patience, love, joy, peace, kindness, patience, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness. Self-control. Gentleness. Amen. That's my lesson, guys. Give God a praise. I thank you for receiving that. I want to convey that because, you know, as we go throughout this week, you know, Lydney wanted me to kind of set the stage for how do we grow in the knowledge of God? How do we increase? And if, if you don't remember anything else, you need to understand godly fellowship. Not just with God, but with one another. It is very important. The Bible says, do not, do not forsake the assembling of yourself. That the saints must gather. That you need to be in the house of God. You need to be among believers. Because iron sharpens iron. And that, that means some people are going to rub you the wrong way. And you need, a, you need to work the fruit of love. And so don't ask God, help me to, help me to love. And somebody, somebody that you don't like is going to show up. And God's going to challenge you. Okay, you asked for the fruit of love. Let me see you produce. And that's how we got to start looking at things. It's not, God is not, he's not a magician. He's not going to magically make you feel, he's going to tell, he's going to say, do it anyway. Do it in spite of how you feel. And so I want us to learn how to receive from God because in our reception, we'll be able to produce much fruit. Give God a praise. Amen. Lord have mercy. I have to say that. Like I'm from back in the day, Lord, have mercy. You don't even put the V-E on it. Lord, have mercy. That was awesome. Did you enjoy that work? Did you really enjoy that? 
before I even go any further, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we want you to keep us not only connected to you, but we want to be receptive to you. God, we want to heed your every command, God. We thank you, Father, for this word that was delivered unto us. It has been meat to our souls. God, we thank you for what you're going to do the rest of the week. God, we appreciate you for being connected to you, for being fruitful bearing believers we don't want to just be leaves and just be pretty on the vine and on the branch but we want to be fruit bearing individuals from young to old we want you to say well done thy good and faithful servant you have produced much fruit in the name of jesus we pray everybody say amen greetings welcome to the new bethel church Morning prayer is held every Wednesday at 6.15 a.m. Call details are on the church website and social media pages. Prayer requests can be submitted throughout the week to the church office, or you may email them to prayer at newbethelkc.org. A new summer Christian education series has begun. The theme is, do the best you can with your own life. Part two, your responsibility heart, home, and health. We invite you to join us each week. Save the date for Vacation Bible School 2024. This Vacation Bible School is for all ages. It will be held July 29th through August 2nd from 5.30 p.m. to 8th nightly. Dinner will be served each evening. Confirm your attendance online at newbethelcasey.org. Ladies of the New Bethel Church are invited to swim, SELA Women in Ministry. This event will be held on Saturday, August 24th, from 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. at Regina's All Access Realty, LLC. The pool area is indoors. Join us for relaxation, prayer, and an enjoyable afternoon at the pool. Space is limited. Confirm your attendance at newbethelkc.org. There will be a special back-to-school prayer on Sunday, August 18th. Students, teachers, administrators, coaches, and all those that work in education resources will be covered in this prayer. We encourage you to stay connected to the New Bethel Church by following our social media platforms, New Bethel KC. Thank you for seeding into the New Bethel Church electronic giving options are displayed. If you would like to give in person, by cash, check, or credit card, please see the designated individuals as you exit.